mean, no one is. So the fact is we have to address these situations. The time is of the utmost importance is what I'm trying to say. We were failed by Prison Planet. We were failed by InfoWars and a number of other outlets as well. And these are the ones that claim to be the largest, the most important, blah, blah, blah. But you see what I'm saying when this conspiracy is a lot provable. Holding has been issued. Fast and Furious is nothing. Again, I'm going to keep harping on that because this is Fast and Furious times 100. Times that's my opinion, but... You know, I've been watching politics and reading books and paying attention, and I'm an intelligent, capable, coherent individual, so that is my analysis at the present time. Now we have one more to look at here. Let's look at number 12. This will be on page 85. Has the government set up radiation monitoring stations to track the release? The NRC understands that EPA is utilizing its existing nationwide radiation monitoring system, RADNET, to monitor continuously the nation's air and it regularly monitors drinking water, milk, and precipitation for environmental radiation. EPA has publicly stated its agreement with the NRC's assessment that we do not expect to see radiation at harmful levels reaching the U.S. from damaged Japanese nuclear power plants. Nevertheless, EPA has stated that it plans to work with its partners to deploy additional monitoring capabilities to parts of the western U.S. and U.S. territories. Now I'm going to click to a screen I've got open from Alexander Higgins' blog, and I'm going to read the title to this article. And I still have a decent opinion of Alexander Higgins, and I like his website, and, and when it comes to radiation, but in informable any news and Alexander Higgins, those are the three places to go. And Higgins posts things that nobody else will. Same with any news and same with informable. Those, that little trio there, it's pretty much alone and of itself now. I didn't see Higgins go into the details with the FOIA doc. I did tell from the script one, two, and three, but he did not mirror and carry any of those either. And those are where I really pulled from the documents and really gave the whole larger picture. You know. Now let's look at the title of this. It's called Confirmed EPA Rigged Radnet Japan Nuclear Radiation Monitoring Equipment to Report Lower Levels of Fukushima Fallout. So we have evidence of all they say oh, yeah, and we test, too. It's not going to get here. It's too far away, but we're going to test just in case. And then we find out that they were, they, rigged, they recalibrated the monitors. What happened was they recalibrated where the level dropped so low, it dropped below just the baseline level before the accident. So all of a sudden, people said, hey, what's going on? All of a sudden, now we're even lower than the background radiation we had before the accident. So they're, you know, they're not always competent. Sometimes they have slip-ups, and we catch them in it. So... While they say we're testing and doing all these wonderful things to make sure you're safe, really, the situation with the RADnet, and, and it goes put in the article, I suggest you go to his website and look into this one. The lady that was overseeing that was a George Bush only friend, and if you read about it, the operation's just a sham. None of them work. Half of them are shut down. You know, that's unacceptable. Where's our money going? Where's our tax money going? What is it paying for that we don't have safety measures you know, the rubric of national security is played out every day, all day, to hide anything from us, right? But where's the national security when it came to Plume Gate? Where's the national security? Again, on Obama's administration, Romney won't talk about it. Alternative media is 99% quiet. When they do talk about it, it's talking about the disaster or they're talking about some side issue, but they will not spell out the larger picture. And again, I challenge anyone to show me a document, show me an article. If you, First of all, you'll have to read my Tales from the Script 1, 2, and 3. Once you've read those, I challenge you to find another article that shows the big picture like I do and points the finger towards our fascist government and this regime which has caused this to us, okay? And I haven't found that yet, and I'm still waiting for someone to show me, but any person, anyone at all, to write in the big picture. Now, let's go to page 103. I get pretty fired up over this because children are most affected as their cells are dividing at a higher rate. They are absolutely innocent, folks. There's, there's no, you cannot tell me any child that was affected by the radiation deserved it. Period. Period. Maybe some congressmen did, but no, no, none of the children. I can guarantee you that. Now, on page 103, we're looking at a letter from Congressman Blumenauer, and this once again shows the, the obvious common sense logic that, you know, if, if from China we get pollution that floats across, and we know this. California's dealt with it, Oregon's dealt with it, Washington's, the West Coast has dealt with China pollution for many, many years. Do you think maybe if there's a meltdown in Japan, it would take the Pacific jet stream and come over here? So it's pretty obvious. And here's, here's uh, Congressman Earl Blumenauer's letter to Jack Sco and uh, Lisa Jackson of the EPA. Dear 
Security Administrator Jackson and Chairman Jaxco. I write to inquire about the potential risk to U.S. West Coast communities from the explosions and release of radiation from the Fukushima Daiichi nuclear facility in Japan. In a region that is already breathing air pollution from China, my constituents are concerned about radiation contamination from the facility reaching the West Coast. Common sense there. While a number of experts have indicated that contamination in the U.S. as a result of the Japanese catastrophe is unlikely, I would like to better understand the agency's contingency plans and your plan for disseminating information to concerned citizens. At your earliest convenience, please respond to me with the following information. What is the U.S. government doing to monitor radiation levels over the Pacific? What steps is the government taking to plan for a scenario in which radiation is elevated to unsafe levels? How does the government plan to provide information about this potential risk to citizens? Thank you for your attention to this request, so on and so forth. So you can see Congressman Blumenau is asking the right questions, and this is what anyone with common sense should be asking at the time. Did he get the answers? Probably not. Probably not, because some congressmen are compartmentalized. Some don't, may not even know the dangers of nuclear radiation. I was absolutely oblivious and ignorant to this whole situation up until, what, February 27th, that month of February in 2012, when uh, my mom came to me with the informable uh, article, and I read Hickson and, and Thompson's well-written articles, and my hat's off to both of them, excellent writers, and, and really, that's where I got my heads up from. So I compiled what they had written, and then I listened to the documents, but first I just took an overview of of both of their editorials they had written and kind of compiled that and still gave a big picture too and said, hey, what's going on here, you know? And at that time, like I say, I had a, I was naive and my bubble was popped right there. And it was popped later and I found out that Jones and crew in the InfoWars, I was a big subscriber and a big fan and follower and that's who woke me up. My uncle was on the, my uncle's a Navy pilot that was interviewed on Jones about the Jets in 9-11, could you make that spiral turn to hit the Pentagon? And my uncle says, definitely not. He's an old-school Navy pilot. So I know Jones does interview people who are legit from time to time, but I've seen him steer the conversation with Greg Pallas when it comes to nuclear power, and it's very sublime. You must understand within the alternative media, the infiltration, the manipulation must be much more sublime because we're dealing with another classification sociologically speaking, of people who are already questioning and they're doubting and they know government's not being honest. They know the mainstream media's been corrupted and co-opted. And so they're very suspicious already, okay, than that. But I say they've woken up into a sub-reality. Think of the Matrix and think of Neo as he's, you know, lifts open his container. Well, just think if he lifts open that container just into another sub-container that's a little bit large in that, he didn't even come out yet. And that's kind of what's happened here. You're in a secondary container, a secondary reality, where you're still not getting all the facts, right? So that's very, we'll go over this next time. I'm, I'm running out of time here, six minutes left. But I promise next time I will go into detail on the my classification. It doesn't need to be derogatory or rude by calling the herd or sheep or sheeple or whatever you want, but... I have to give them some kind of name and, and, and classify so you can better understand the protocols of the wise men of Zion pertaining to media control specifically go hand in hand with this little concept of mine of these the four herds or the three herds, whatever you want to call them. And once you understand these different classifications and you understand their game plan, the protocols, particularly number 12 relating to control of the press, it all really falls into place. And you understand that on a small scale, sometimes my articles like Plumegate can be published. They will, you know, to a small scale, allow them to be published to study and see the reaction. You know, they control 99%. To let 1% publish an article through is really just a test to research things for all intents and purposes. Nothing will come of it. There will be no giant revolution or no new different third-party president elect or anything special. And they know this. So for all intents and purposes, those following the alternative media that are falling for this Operation Mockingbird style infiltration, and that's basically the scenario. They're being fooled again, and they're not given all the information. There's gatekeeping. There's damage mitigation. There's also memes and paradigms being projected on the public at large. For instance, real quick, if you look amongst a lot of these larger groups, they're promoting a lot of police brutality videos. And I don't defend police brutality. It's a horrible thing. But if you look, and for a long time I asked myself, why so much? Why so much? You know, they had me all angry at the cops and everything. I, and I was developing the mentality, us versus them with the police. That's simply not the case. And my brother works 
at a jail outside of Panther Hills County, and the police there, more often than not, are good people like you or I. There's always bad cases, and maybe this is growing because they're coming back from the military and getting jobs, and they really should just have their benefits and stuff paid for, and they should be retiring and rehabbing from, you know, you've been in a war in Iraq, you better give me 10 to 15 years to retire from that from it. So basically, let me sum up here, i got four minutes left. It was never carried like it should have been in Plumgate and the alternative media. As a result of that, Obama's sailing right on through to the election. We've got three weeks. We're almost going to be there. And he's not going to pay the consequences like he should have. So when I make the statement, some think it's outrageous, some think it's brash, that's the elements of the alternative media. In fact, most of them have actually protected Obama. Whilst harping on him about little things, I don't doubt that. And I don't doubt a lot of fact-checkable Although I will prove to you that there's a lot of media malpractice going on. Make no mistake, that I can prove beyond a doubt. I can prove greed and media malpractice hands down. And I can make a very excellent case, like a typical case, the fact that these are all controlled outlets and probably CIA, just like the uh, um, operation, original Operation Mockingbird, and maybe FBI like the Pro. I've been looking into that recently, and I found some declassified documents uh, from Operation Hoodwink, like I explained that last night, how the FBI is trying to manipulate two different factions into some kind of you know violent altercation between the two. So there's a lot of manipulation going on, and and you have to understand, like I say, within the alternative media, that manipulation must be of a much more sublime level. It can't be like David Icke says with the vaccines. If the guy getting ahead of you falls over dead, you're going to walk away and you want nothing to do with it. So it has to be very sublime. With you know, Alex Jones will say, fast and furious, rah, 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 and he'll harp on that, and Obama, 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 but he really didn't go into the 40 documents, and he didn't expose them like he should have for what happened on his watch, because with Obama, we got one of three things, folks, one of three things. Either he's a buffoon, totally oblivious, don't know what he's doing, totally incompetent. Number two, he's conspired and lied to by all these agents. Everyone's lying to him and conspiring to him. Or number three, he's totally on it, knew the plume, went to South America right when the worst of the plume hit. That was no coincidence. And that's why I'm so angry with alternative media, right? The fact is no one really knows about this. It has not come to the forefront in the alternative media, certainly not the mainstream, and very few elements within the independent media are even talking about the freedom of this documents that prove a massive multi-agency conspiracy to hide the plume. Now, I didn't get to the uh, fatality figures tonight, but I tell you I've got a couple of good files on this, and I've got the Sherman Mangano study, and I will read the intro to that to you tomorrow night, which is clear and concise in just a couple paragraphs so you can understand their methodology, how they arrive at this conclusion that these people have died. And indeed, there has been what they call the Fukushima footprint, and you can find this on any news informal where they talk about it, that they have determined the radiation we're suffering is from Fukushima. It has a particular fingerprint. They can guarantee that's where it's from. So they can eliminate the Cold War era bomb testing. They can eliminate the effects of Mobile or Three Mile Island or the Simi Valley. Or there's a lot of others when you really dig into it. So that's going to sum it up for tonight. I made it for the full 30 minutes. I had a pretty raging headache to begin with. When I start talking about government corruption and conspiracy and lies and deceit, I get pretty fed up and my headache goes away. So, folks, we'll be back on tomorrow night at 11 o'clock. Patrick Penry, I appreciate you joining the broadcast. And uh, please get the word out about this. And let everybody you know, uh, cue the men to the NRC for your documents and the conspiracy to come. Thank you, and have a good night.